Are you looking for the best metal detector? In this video, we will look at some of the best metal detectors on the market. Before we get started with our video, we have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Number 4. Metal detecting can be a fun way to snag some extra vitamin D outside while channeling your inner pirate. But seeking buried treasure can be hard without the proper equipment. Fisher's F-22 metal detector, a mid-range detector featured in the company's hobby line, checks all the boxes, a waterproof, sleek design, a large interface, and multiple settings. Over two weekends, we trekked the trails and strolled beaches with the Fisher F-22. First things first, at a mere 2.3 pounds, this detector is incredibly lightweight. With a thin design of 22x 8x 5 inches it's designed for reach. The hand grip is lined with spongy padding, giving the user extra gripping power in harsh weather conditions. A long stem extends to an elliptical-shaped search coil. Normally, we'd find the elliptical shape detrimental, but when you're walking, it helps against accidentally bumping the coil. The real MVP of this design, however, is the easy-to-read interface, or control housing. While small, its screen boasts a large target ID number and depth meter. Other models would leave you squinting to pinpoint underground goodies, but Fisher ensures that you can easily read the interface. We have to credit Fisher with their bluntness, on the, assembly page of the instruction guide at the very top, it says, tool required, number one Phillips screwdriver. They were not kidding. We needed one to remove the screw from the armrest and secure the control housing, or the interface, onto the stem. Once you secure the interface onto the stem, the rest is easier. Using the O-rings, attach the stems and tighten the rings so that the stem is complete. Make sure that you straighten the stems properly, it was here where we realized we'd flipped the stems and needed to separate and reattach them. Align the 9-inch wide search coil to the stem, add the coil washers, and secure it all with the knurled knob and the bolt. It should be tight enough that it won't flop but loose enough that you don't have to use your entire body strength to shift it as you're detecting. Number 3. Traveling around Australia, you get to visit some amazing country. Whether it's the vast interior with its red soils and ancient ranges, the endless coastline of white sands and deep blue seas, or the alpine bush areas, Australia is a treasure chest of wonders for the eyes and the soul. Lying beneath this beauty is a treasure of a more economic nature. Gold, money, jewelry, and valuable fragments of human history lie just beneath the surface of almost all this country, and it's all out there for you to find. You just need one thing to find it, a metal detector. Like many other travelers, I had long considered getting a metal detector to take with us on our adventures. The idea of going out for a long walk somewhere, swinging the coil around and unearthing a few valuables really appealed to me. If we were able to make a little money from our finds along the way, all the better. The problem was trying to decide which metal detector to buy from the hundreds of different models available. It seemed like a nearly impossible choice. Until now. You see, I'm no expert in the field of metal detectors. I used to think, it's all just metal, right? Why would one metal detector be any better than another? What's the difference between a $100 detector and one that costs $3,000? A little research and talking to some enthusiasts and I quickly found the answer. Essentially there are two types of metal detectors, those that are designed to find coins and other metal relics and those specifically designed to find gold nuggets. The reasons for this and the technology behind it can fill a book, but essentially, it has to do with the highly mineralized soil in which gold nuggets are found, plus the hardware required to find them that is built into these specialized detectors is extremely expensive. Now if you plan to go and take out a mining lease in a secret location somewhere in the many vast gold fields of this continent and make a living finding and selling gold, then I highly recommend you spend the money on a specialized gold detector. Otherwise, a good coin and treasure detector will most likely satisfy your needs. The problem for me was I didn't want to exclude gold nugget prospecting completely from my fossicking activities. I wanted a metal detector that could do both and I didn't want to spend a mega fortune doing so. This seemed an impossibility until MineLab, a name synonymous with metal detectors, released the Equinox 800. Number 2. Since there are three metal detectors in the product line and they are very much alike, it is really hard to say what is the difference between them. You are welcome to read about Garrett at Gold vs. at Pro comparison in our reviews. So, let's briefly discuss the differences between Garrett at Max and at Pro, since these devices are very similar. First of all, Garrett at Max has wireless headphones, which are included into the device package set. You can't submerge them, but absence of wire is a very big advantage in this case. Those who tried them, they know what I mean. 
you can see the difference when using 15 and 18 kHz frequency, but between 15 and 13.6 kHz, it is rather questionable. In my opinion, this is just pure marketing stuff. There is no significant change in the device performance, just the depth of signal penetration into the ground has slightly increased. The metal detector search depth increases as well, which is the third important difference, announced by the manufacturer. And you have a question, due to what? The device has the same coil, but the software was improved a bit. In general, it seems to be another marketing trick. As for the fine adjustment, not every detectorist will be using it. Threshold, is rather important setting, but it is also one of the device fine adjustments. Not every user knows its purpose. Besides, Garrett at Gold has a threshold function as well. The display backlit is rather useful thing, especially for those who go treasure hunting in bright sunlight since in this case you can't see anything on a pro display. And volume adjustment. There was 100,500 complaints from a pro users about it and finally Garrett decided to add this function. I won't make any conclusions instead of you. So, you are welcome to decide on your own basing on the real facts, which model of the metal detectors suits your needs better. As Garrett states at max is better balanced due to the improved design of the device case and the handle if compared to pro and gold devices. In terms of design Garrett at max rather slightly differs from at pro, it has an S-shaped shaft and an armrest, a control unit and a coil. Number 1. Deciding which metal detector to use on the trails can be a challenge. For those who want an intermediate option, the Bounty Hunter Tracker IV is a great choice. The older cousin to Bounty Hunter's Junior line, it enhances the detecting experience with two-tone indicating and metal eliminating technology. Over the course of two weekends, we tested its design, battery life, and performance. At 3.7 pounds, the Tracker IV is one of the heaviest detectors we've tested. It's also one of the larger ones, at 28.8 x 10 x 6.2 inches. Thankfully, Bounty Hunter offset its size and weight by offering a thick, padded hand grip and an armrest to ensure you can keep it steady while trekking the trails. However, keep in mind that those who don't spend their evenings pumping weights at the gym may feel the poundage as they hunt for buried treasure. 3.7 pounds may not sound like much on paper, but after hefting it for several hours the muscle fatigue is very real. The bulkiest piece of the Tracker IV, the interface box with internal battery port, sounds complex but is actually very simple. It consists of a flip switch two-tone indicator, a power, sensitivity setting, and a disc, notch setting. Extra points go to the headphone jack Bounty Hunter added to the interface, making it possible to keep the alert tones quiet when necessary, especially since you can't alter the volume. Smack in the center of the interface is the target indicator, making it easy to see how strongly the detector pings without craning.